name is Bonnie. And Bible Time with Bonnie is all about the Bible. This is my absolute favorite book and so much more than a book. Today, we want to learn about how the Bible is like a love letter. You see all these love letters? Well, they're from my husband, Jerry. Some of you might remember Pastor Jerry. He was my husband and friend for 40 years. But on April 1st, 2020, Pastor Jerry went home to be with Jesus. But he left me all these love letters. There's all kinds of different ones, ones with flowers on them, and sometimes he made his own, like this one. He took his picture. This one has a heart on it and all kinds of different love letters. You know, when Jesus was walking on this earth, he talked with people, he healed the sick, and then one day he went home to be with his father. But he did not leave his disciples or us alone. He sent the Holy Spirit and he left us a love letter. The Bible tells us about God's love. And when we read this book, we learn about His love for us. It's really important to memorize and learn verses from the Bible and hide them in our heart. So today, our verse that we're going to think about is a very special one. It's found in the book of John, verse chapter 3, verse 16. And it says, God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. Let's say that again. Maybe you can say it with me. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. You did a great job. And it would be awesome to just say that over and over until you can say it without looking and just from your heart. Hey boys and girls, we want to sing a song. It's a spelling song. And we're going to spell the word victory. V-I-C-T-O-R-Y spells victory. That's right. And you say, what is victory? Well, victory is winning. Like maybe some of you play soccer or three pitch or softball and you have two teams. Well, one of the teams wins the game. That means they get the victory. Jesus wants us to win in life too. He wants us to win over sin. So when we listen to Jesus and follow him, he will help us win the victory over disobeying our parents, being unkind, saying bad words, lots of things that, that do us harm. But Jesus came to give us victory. So let's learn this victory song. It goes like this.
special word for you today. I'm going to draw some letters. G and a big O and kind of a scary S and the letter P, E and the letter L. Can you see what it spells? Gospel. What's gospel mean? It actually means good news. But this little boy hasn't had good news. He's got very bad news because the doctor told him he is going to be very sick. Oh, and he's very sad. In fact, he's crying. He can't go outside and play. And he's not feeling very well at all. But could you imagine what would be good news for him? Some kind of news. Maybe somebody gave him a new game to play. Well, that might be good news. But what if the doctor said, I have got really good news for you. I have got a very special pill that if you take this pill, you'll be 100% better. Only one pill, that's all you gotta do. Well, do you think he would be happy about that if he was to take that one pill? Well, I've got some news for you about something else that's like a sickness, but it's a thing called sin. And I'm making a serpent from this S. Because way back in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve sinned and they disobeyed God and, and they were separated and, oh, it was like, they were like this little boy, they weren't very happy. They'd been separated from God. Well, somebody came to save us from our sins. You know who that was? I'm gonna draw this person. And you can probably tell from my picture who it is. It's none other than Jesus, that's right. Oh, he came to cure us of that terrible sickness, the sickness of our souls called sin. Let's draw Jesus on the cross right here. When he died for us, boys and girls, he paid for our sin. It was like he made the cure. And all we have to do, we just have to ask him to forgive us. We just have to open up the door of our heart. That's right just like this picture shows, opening up the door. And when you open up the door of your heart and say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my sins, it's like he's, he's giving us a cure, a 100% cure that we can be ready for heaven. Well, let's little draw a little Susie over here because Susie has done something, boys and girls. She's prayed and she opened up the door of her heart to the Lord Jesus and Oh, what a wonderful thing that is to have happen in your life. It's the best decision that you could ever make. She's so excited. Maybe you'd like to be like Susie. Maybe you'd like to open up the door of your heart 
and have Jesus forgive you for all your sins. That's what he did on the cross for us. How about it right today, right where you are, sitting there right now? And you could pray a simple little prayer with Pastor Jerry right now and say, Lord Jesus, I want to open up the door of my heart. I want to ask Jesus to forgive me for all those wrong things that I've done. I want to be like Susie. I want to know for sure that my sins are forgiven and that Jesus is living in my heart. Why don't you pray this prayer right with me, right now, right where you are? And you can be like Susie and have Jesus come in your heart. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, oh, please forgive me for all the wrong things that I've done. And op I want to open up my heart to you right now, right where I am, and ask you to come in. The Bible says that whoever calls upon the Lord, he'll hear and he'll answer. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my heart right now. Amen.